Well, hello, people. Today, we're going to build a clipper in Bitwig. Um, actually, Bitwig already has clippers, but the way they are, they're not extremely uh, readable. So we're going to improve that. So double click on an empty space here. I already have a track uh, which has a hi-hat uh, loop in it. And now I want to uh, tame some of the peaks. So search for a grid, drop it in. Um, this line here, that's where the audio stream is going through. Um, I want to cut this for now. And let's grab an oscilloscope so that we can look at what is happening or visualize the clipping itself. Now let's look at the input signal. Um, this is just the hi-hat. Now let's search for a clipper. Um, we actually have two. Uh, this one is simpler to use because it actually reduces the ceiling. So when I drop it in here, you can see that it just starts clipping. While this one actually increases the amplitude of the input and just clicks at or uh, clicks clips at zero dBFS. However, this one has an anti-aliasing. I do not know if the other one has as well. So just to be sure, I want to use this one. Um, however, we have to correct for the fact that it increases the amplitude. So go to level and grab a gain dB. And insert it here. Now here we can reduce the volume, uh, no surprise. And the maximum is minus 24 dB. So double clip to get back to zero get a modulator out and um, an attenuator. No, not an attenuator, um, a value. So hook it up and now assign the modulation. As we determined, minus 24 is the maximum. So we should do the same thing here and not apply more than um, 24 decibels of modulation. Okay. Seems to be correct. So, uh, no, we don't want to recursively modify, uh, modulate. So now you can see it behaves the same way as the other one did before. And this is already somewhat nicer because, yeah, we can see how the waveform is actually... Uh, shrinking as we uh, cut off the peaks. However, uh, it would be nice to have a little better visualization. Now, what one would do, of course, in, intuitively, I would say, is just, let's assign a different color. It's just compare the original signal with the clipped signal. And that then should become visual. Vis yeah, here. You can see the green area. But I figured out this is just not reliable. You will, yeah, and here it seems like a, a, a tight line, but you will see that jumping around is just not stable enough um, to really identify where the, uh, the clicking, uh, the clicking, the clipping is actually happening. So I came up with something else. So instead of using the original signal, I and I know this one starts at 0 dBFS and then reduces its amplitude. So I figured if I grab a constant, um, then take this gain knob, which I already automated, duplicate it, And then use that that one as input and maybe change the color so that we can identify what's happening. Well, actually, I would like this to be green. It's just a matter of taste and the amount of clipping to be red. Now you can see when I change this value, it, it uh, shows me where the clipping is, is happening. Uh, or let's, let's prove that. So until now, nothing happens to uh, the signal. And now it's it's being reduced and it's exactly reduced to the position of the red line. 
Uh, we can also go to fast here if we want a little better or higher resolution. But now, of course, I said I want to see how much is actually cut off. So I don't want the clipped signal here. I want the actual signal before the clipping. And now I can see um, how much we are clipping, which is um, yeah quite useful in my opinion. I, I, I almost use always this clipper since I built it. Um, however, it is not perfect, um, the visualization anyway. Uh, because, yeah, you have peaks here, but if you have peaks in the negative, you don't see them. Um, there's some ways uh, around this. Of course, you could duplicate this entire thing, um, split the positive phase from the negative phase, and then display it. Uh, what you can also do is kind of switch this from bipolar to unipolar. However, if then you have this sums the left and right channel, if then you have some face cancellation, you might not see a peak. Um, yeah, however, I think these are kind of luxury problems. It's it's not really an issue. I just want you to be aware of it. And then we also have a logarithmic scale, which might be a, even a bit more useful, even though I think it doesn't really look that nice. So let make, let's make this one big. Let's make it real big. Um, and here we have a scale. We see this is 0 dBFS, this is minus 10 dB, minus 20. So you have a rough estimation on how much you're actually clipping. Um, and well, of course, we also want to listen to it. Um, so connect the output. And now let's, let's see. Um, maybe I want an attenuator so that it's not too loud. Okay, it's not too bad. So you, you almost can't hear any difference, but uh, we are clearly clipping the signal now. So now in this region, I can, I, I begin to hear something. But if you look at uh, the meter here, with the clipper, we are minus 27. Without this, we are at minus 22. So we have quite a significant uh, decrease in gain without actually, without actually the perceived loudness um, being significantly lowered. However, um, it's actually about building this clipper, not about clippers in general. Um, I still want to touch on it real quick um, because nothing comes um, as a free lunch. And here, let's see what what we can see if you add another equalizer. Um, well, we cut away a lot of the low end here. This is the result we have seen here. This is. Um, and now look what happens when I turn on the clipper. So the, the low level increases significantly and it is not just the kind of um, five or six decibels that we improved. Um, it's also, I presume it is kind of a DC offset uh, that's introduced because of the clipping. I'm not entirely sure, but Anyway, it is happening, and so be careful when you do that, um, especially like on a hi-hat loop, you don't want these low frequencies. So we have to add a low cut again after clipping. But now we lost some of the, the gain reduction we had, probably because, yeah, this kind of clipping or DC offset is undone. I, I don't know exactly what's happening here. I would have to uh, dig a bit deeper to find out. Um, so uh, this just as a warning at the end. However, it, it does behave exactly the same way as, uh, for example, the uh, standard clip does, which is kind of a reference. It does the exact same thing. I'm just You see the exact same thing happening, so 
it's not because of Bitwig. Um, so yeah, and of course, well, I just saved this as a preset, and now this is my my go-to clipper. Well, I hope you like it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.